Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Todd Clint's SharePoint Netcast, episode 196, recorded live on the most glorious of days, Monday, April 14th. I am your host, and hopefully now Stephen Colbert's uh, replacement next year, Todd Clint. Last week, I mentioned that I was hoping to be David Letterman's replacement, he uh, mentioned he was going to retire, and uh, I thought, sure, I had to lock in. I talked to my people, I sent some gifts, I bribed the right folks, and then uh, that Stephen Colbert, now, does that guy have a thing? I, I've, I never really paid much attention, but he ended up taking my job, so now I see an opening on uh, the Colbert rapport, so I'm hoping maybe I can uh, can sneak in there. But while we're waiting for that paperwork to uh, to come through and to get that all signed and the the T's uh, dotted or crossed or whatever, while we're waiting for all that, I still get to get up every morning. I still get to skip on my way to work to Rackspace. Now, some of you more, uh, 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 you know, folks that n notice things better, and, and, that, and that not the folks that are on the audio. That's not fair to you guys. But you'll notice the flag is gone. And that is not, and it, I'm not taking that down because of the, the new job. The, the flag is over there. You're probably noticing that I did some interior decorating back here. We'll cover that in a minute, but the flag will be back next week, flying high and strong. Don't uh, don't fret all that. Still got the rack space cup here, so it's it's all good. Um, but while you're waiting, go out to sharepoint.rackspace.com. We have got all kinds of great SharePoint stuff out there. We've got consulting services. We've got some webinars to watch. We've got white papers to read. We've got video games to play. And when you play the video game, if your boss comes and sees you, you can tell him it's work because it's uh, it's SharePoint.Rackspace.com. So head over there and, uh, and see what all great stuff we have. And then next week, the flag will be flying high in a new place of honor right there uh, behind there. So check that all out. Production notes, uh, we'll have some great production notes next week, won't we folks in the chat room? Uh, but last week's netcast went pretty well. I think I got the audio thing down. Every time I had the audio bad after I talked to Mario the first time, he would uh, he would let me know. Haven't heard from Mario in a week or two, so I think I got it. I think I got the audio down. Got everything produced fairly quickly last week. I think I got it out like by Wednesday. That might be a new record, as a matter of fact. I'm not sure. Um, and then last week, I, I, I played with the background a little bit, and it wasn't quite right. I had my lighting set up, and the lighting looked really good, and I forgot to take a picture of it. So this week, uh, I, I, got, I got on a Skype call with Lori last week, and she helped me do some stuff, showed me some things, and now we've got this glorious background back here. It's going to get even better for the next netcast. Got some things coming in, some parts coming in. I took a picture where my lights are at so that I can do this uh, do this right next time, start from there. Even tweeted it out so you guys can see it. Excuse me, in case I forget. The quality is only coming up every um, every five years. I kind of do these good uh, good improvements, so uh, we've got that uh, we've got that to look forward to. So, but I think the production is is coming around, and uh, I'm liking all that. So, thanks to everybody who's helped with that. It, it takes a village. <laughs> Lori is mentioning in the chat room, uh, I learned what pleats were. Now, in my defense, uh, you know, since I'm a horrible dresser, I have pants with pleats, uh, but that, uh, but I was, I was trying to get everything uh, set up right, and and Lori's like, well, just pleat them. And I'm like, oh, pleats, oh, that's, mm, that's genius. So that was one of the many tips that uh, that Lori gave me. So, but it's all looking much better. It'll be even better uh, for the next netcast. So uh, production's coming right along. On to the topics. We have got a bunch of great topics. I know what you're all wanting to hear about, and we're going to talk about that in a couple of minutes. But I had a couple of things that I wanted to talk about. Uh, one, one last week, and then kind of a boring one. I got to do the responsible thing and all that. So the first one is the Microsoft Virtual Machine Converter 2.0 or uh, DOS for Javier there in the chat room, um, and Enrique, yeah. And and this is just a little tool, free little tool, that uh, that will let you convert your VMs uh, from a, a lesser inferior hypervisor up into uh, Hyper-V. So Hyper-V has gotten really good. When Hyper-V came out with uh, Windows 2008, it was pretty nasty, pretty gnarly. I didn't like it. I kind of avoided it. But the last couple of versions of Hyper-V have been pretty spot on. And so if you want to move your, your workloads, if you've got them in VMware or, you know, Zen or, or those kind of things, um, 
you can use this virtual machine converter. Again, it's a free tool. Take it for a spin. doesn't cost anything. Uh, but I did want to mention that one last week and kind of ran out of time. The uh, so so Jared in the chat room is saying I said you know you have to wait for the the topic you're really here uh, here to, to to hear about. He's like yes Linux and Open PHP. I don't even know if those are real things, Jared. For all I know, you're making those up. So I I got it's like ramblings of a madman in the chat room right now. Um, so the other thing that I wanted to talk about was last week was Patch Tuesday, and I know celebrated worldwide by young and by old alike, everybody looks forward to Patch Tuesday. The second Tuesday of every month, Microsoft blesses us all with security updates for our Microsoft software. Last Tuesday was no exception. We got our Windows 8.1 update 1 that was sort of eked out as a security patch, but... Uh, Boy, it wasn't really, but but then they eked it out, and then it's like deja vu all over again. They pulled the patch because it broke patching, but it looks like they've got that fixed. I know a couple of people who have installed it uh, in the last couple of days, so that one came out. But the one I really wanted to talk about is the uh, MS. Well, I lost the uh, my my page here scrolled. MS fourteen um, dash seventeen. And that is a critical patch that revolves around Word. And it's, uh, it's a thing that bad guys can use, can hijack inside a Word. And everything that has Word, Word, it needs this patch. So we're talking about all of your uh, Windows XP desktops that are running Office 2003, Service Pack 3, all the way up to your SharePoint 2013 servers that are running Office Web Apps. Everything needs it. So if you've got Word the client or Word the service or Word the cat, whatever, if it's got Word in it, you need to install this patch. And that's MS14-017. Uh, so get that out there on your server. Start testing it to uh, do the responsible, uh, the responsible bit. Okay, so that's all the boring stuff. Now the fun stuff that we're all super excited about, and that's Windows Phone 8.1. So we'll get uh, we'll get talking about this guy uh, here in a minute. He's all very excited to talk to you guys. So we've been talking about Windows Phone 8.1 for a month or so now, and it's we've known it's coming. They've told us it's coming. They talked about it at Build, that kind of stuff. Today was the first day that really the every man could get it. It wasn't just you know testers and journalists and all that kind of stuff. The embargo's lifted. Everything is out. I'll talk to you in a couple of minutes about how you can get it because anybody can get it now. But first, I'm so gosh darn excited about Windows Phone 8.1. I just want to gush about it for a little bit. Um, but in the few minutes that we have tonight or this morning, whenever you're listening to this, I'm not going to cover everything. And so I'm going to try to get you kind of whipped up into a lather on a few of these things, and then I'm going to send you off with some homework. And that homework is going to be to go out and, you know, if you've got a Windows phone, find out you know what else what else is in this that I didn't get to talk about. If you don't have a Windows phone, certainly beat yourself up verbally about your bad choices in life, and then go out and buy a, a Windows phone. But while you're doing this research for yourself, outside of the stuff I've got, the two main websites that I've been going to are WPCentral.com, that's WindowsPhoneCentral.com, and they've kind of got uh, the best of both worlds. They've got a front page, it's got a lot of articles, blog type stuff on it, reviews and, and how-tos, and they kind of uh, dig down into some of the, the meteor pieces of Windows Phone 8.1. They also have forums there. So they've got forums for different OSs. So they've had a Windows Phone 8.1 forum for a while. They've also got phones per device. So there's a Lumia 920 forum. There's a Lumia 520 forum, all that, uh, all that stuff. And uh, so no, you know, no matter what you do, they've also got forums for things like my, uh, my adorable little Dell Venue 8 Pro. There's a, uh, there's a, a forum for that out there too. So Everything you need, WPCentral.com. The other place that I've been going is Paul Therott's blog, and that is at winsupersite.com. Paul is a big Windows Phone proponent, and he's had Windows Phone for a couple of weeks now, 8.1, and so he's got a bunch of great blog posts there. So use that stuff to augment the, the great things I'm going to be talking about here in a couple of minutes. 
So the first thing that I wanted to talk about is the new keyboard that came with Windows Phone 8.1. So this is something that I had with Android because I'm, you know, I'm I'm uh, I'm reformed, but I used to be an Android guy, and Android had this thing, this keyboard called Swipe, and everybody loves Swipe. And the idea with Swipe was that you didn't touch each letter as you spelled stuff. You just stuck your finger on the keyboard and you just drew. You just so like if you were uh, spelling the instead of tapping T H E, you'd put your finger on T, drag it down to H, and drag it up to E. I never really got the hang of that. It never really did it for me. I never really used swipe much. Now Windows Phone 8.1 has that same functionality now, and I still wasn't impressed with it. Didn't think it was very exciting, and uh, was talking to Lori today, and she's like, oh, this is the greatest thing ever, and I took it for a spin, and it didn't suck. And then I used it later to do some other stuff, and it still didn't suck, so I might have to revisit this. But the idea is that you just draw, you don't, you don't have to, to, to type, and it has done a remarkable job figuring out double letters and things like that. I'm a big, uh, I'm a big fan of that. So that's one of those things, and that's just on by default. You don't need to do anything to make that work. You just, uh, you just start typing. And if you don't want to do that, you can continue to type the old way, and it just doesn't care. It's good either way. So that was, uh, that was one of the big things. A new keyboard. So try that out. Don't be an old fuddy-duddy like I was, and just say, Ah, back when I was a kid, we didn't have no drawing, swiping keyboards. We had an IBM Selectric, and we couldn't type two letters more than more than two letters at a time, and we liked it. Don't be that guy. Uh, go out and try the new uh, the new drawing keyboard. It really is pretty slick. It really is faster, and it really doesn't suck. I'm as surprised as you guys were, um, and especially so. I know so jo Joanne Klein in the chat room here. She's got one of those 1520s that's uh, I think about two inches bigger than this. I think I forget exactly. Um, but she's never uh, she's never done this before. Now I don't know if she's actually going to be able to reach both sides of the keyboard on that 1520. It was I mean it's it's a big thing. Uh, but if she can, I mean if her arms are long enough and she doesn't just wear herself out going back and forth, I think uh, I think you really like it. That was one of the things that I liked. The next thing that I wanted to talk about, again in no particular order, is the Action Center. And the Action Center is something now I didn't do a good job of. Uh, of getting actions in here, but the Action Center is something that iOS and Android have had for a while, and Windows Phone was sorely lacking. And it's this idea. Let me check my screen here, quick. Yep, it's this idea that you can drag down from the top, and you can see I've got the little icon there that tells me I've got something in my Action Center. Uh, you can drag down from the top, and it's got uh, it's got a bunch of stuff in there. And let me see what that is. Okay, um, and so the idea behind this is you can see we've got some shortcut keys in here. You've got four shortcut keys you can define. One of the things that has always irritated the crud out of me about Windows Phone is how tough it is to get to some of these settings. I travel a lot, and so I'm getting in airplanes and having to put my phone in airplane mode. And before Windows Phone 8.1, you could put your phone in airplane mode, and it was like 47 easy steps. It was like, turn it on, do this, do this, go to settings, scroll down, go to airport mode, yes, confirm, blah. Now there's just a button for it. So I can just hit a button, and I go into air, uh, airplane mode. Same thing with uh, Bluetooth and wireless. If I want to turn those on and off now, I've got those things at the top now, and uh, and those are pretty slick. The other thing now is... All of your notifications, every time you get an email or a text message or a Skype or any of that kind of stuff, it all shows up. It shows up in its regular place, but uh, you can uh, you can also get it in the Action Center. Doug, uh, Doug caught me. He noticed that I, I quickly cleared something in my Action Center. He thought it was uh, eyebrow waxing. It was really belly button waxing. I get that done every, uh, every other Tuesday morning. I just, a, a boy likes to feel pretty. I can't help it. I like to feel pretty. Everybody likes to feel pretty. Um, so the Action Center will have all of your notifications from all of the apps that you're used to getting notifications from. Email, text message, all that, uh, all that kind of stuff. But also now we have the option for apps to do notifications as well. So if you go in uh, and if you look up there at the top, we've got all settings, which is nice. Again, we've got a shortcut to that. 
and we have a notifications and actions setting and this is uh, this is this setting right here so you can see at the top I've got the four buttons that I defined wireless uh, Bluetooth airplane mode and all that kind of stuff but then I've also got a list of apps here and these are all the apps that can uh, put notifications in there. You'll notice like the Channel 9 app. Now the Channel 9 app is from Microsoft and it's from channel9.msdn.com and it's where all their videos and things, uh, things like that are at. So I can go in per application. So you can see here I'm at the, uh, the Channel 9. Well, you can't because the focus isn't very good. But I'm at the Channel 9 app settings and per app I can define what kind of notifications go in the the action center whether they show up in there uh you know if it makes sound if it makes a default sound or a specific sound uh whether it vibrates things like that per app which is nice so this morning they they dumped a bunch of new videos on channel line and my phone was going off the hook and so I just went in here and said, you know, Channel Line, I like that stuff, but don't make noise and don't vibrate. And now I still find out when Channel Line puts uh, updates in, but I don't, uh, I don't get pestered beyond belief with it. But you can see all of the different uh, things, the, the Windows Store, my email, Wi-Fi, when there's new Wi-Fi things, uh, all that kind of stuff are now in the Action Center. So it's pretty slick to go to just one spot and have all that. Big, big fan of that. And you also have the option for showing those when your phone is locked, so you don't have to go through your unlock thing and do that so um, the Action Center is, uh, is is one of my favorite pieces now along with um, along with getting alerted when stuff happens they added to Windows Phone 8.1 not getting alerted when things happen and this is something that I think first showed up in Windows 8.1 maybe I forget and it's this idea of quiet hours so I can go into my settings and I have a bunch of settings for quiet hours and what those quiet hours are is they are a time when your phone won't pester you and it's pretty slick the way that it works so you can just go in and set quiet hours on right now just go in and hit a button and your phone won't uh, pester you except when it will but we'll talk about when that is in a second um, but then you can go in and you can say here are the times that I want to have quiet hours so I've got mine set up that uh, I have quiet hours every day starting at 11 p.m. and finishing up at 8 a.m. so if anybody texts me after 11 or before 8 a.m. number one they're gonna get a very uh, weird response because I'm just gonna be you know hopped up on uh, NyQuil or whatever uh, but it's not gonna pester me it's not gonna ring it's not gonna vibrate it's not gonna do all that kind of stuff also have an option for the phone automatically putting itself in quiet mode when something in my calendar is marked as busy which is kinda nice I know uh, I know some people that I've been in meetings with that could uh, could mind having that but then the other great thing is at the bottom they have these idea this idea of breakthrough rules so the phone is saying I will never ever bother you when you're in a meeting or after 11 or before 8 except for all of these times that I'll bother you but it's really great so these breakthrough rules are um, are a couple of ways for things to get through so one of the the ways that somebody can break through is if you put them in your inner circle or you know like from a meet the parents the the circle of trust you can put people in your inner circle and then when they text you email you do whatever call you they will break through the quiet hours and what's really cool about that is not only does it have this inner circle thing when you uh, try to populate your inner circle it gives you some suggestions it goes through your contacts and it says uh, you know this person has the same last name as you they're probably family uh, you probably want them in your inner circle it doesn't put them in your inner circle but it suggests them so I did uh, I did all that got some inner circle folks in there took some suggestions uh, did some other ones that weren't suggestions another thing you can say um, somebody can break through whether they're in your inner circle or not if they call two times in three minutes so that's uh, this idea where you know somebody's calling you all the time because something terrible's happened you know Timmy's fell down into a well or something Lassie keeps hit, keeps hitting redial but it's 1101 um, you can also uh, also set that too so there's some other things you can also have it automatically reply to them <laughs> with a text message and say that you're busy so it's uh, it's pretty cool so this idea of quiet hours is uh, is really handy I actually I actually use this I've talked in the past about glance how much I like 
uh, glance. Glance has the same idea where your screen will show you the time, uh, whether the phone is on or not, but then starting at quiet hours, it dims the screen, uh, stuff like that. And I have to take a minute in the chat room because the folks in the chat room are putting uh, putting a lot of love into this. This may come as a shock to, to, to folks that know me, but I have a few pet peeves, we'll say. Just a few, certainly less than the common person, certainly less than the, uh, the, the regular person does. And, and I feel like the folks in the chat room here have been, been writing them all down, and so now they're planning to hit me with every single one of them. Uh, so they were talking about the, uh, the quiet time, and they were talking about how much I absolutely don't like automated tweets. <laughs> Which I don't like direct messages in Twitter. It's like all the list of things. I'm sure vegetables are in there somewhere. They're probably going to do something with that. Um, so it's it's good that uh, that I'm being listened to. I guess I don't know. Oh, I can only await. Uh, I'm glad I got the quiet hours thing. Uh, but by all means, when you get Windows Phone 8.1, go poke into the quiet hours and just see. Uh, and, and see what's in there because that's some really good stuff. I really, uh, I really like all that. Another feature that I wanted to talk about, probably the biggest one of all that they have talked about, is uh, is this little lady that we like to call Cortana. And um, and so if you look here on on the old phone, she's even got her own live tile. The live tile is kind of weird, but it also hijacks your search button. But Cortana is this idea that you can use natural language and natural questions and things like that and it uses Bing on the back end but it also looks through your personal stuff like if if you allow it so it will allow you to set you know uh, reminders for yourself or call people in your uh, your contacts list you can ask it questions about the weather and the news and, and all that kind of stuff and it's uh, it's pretty cool now for those of you who played uh, background or <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. I was reading the chat room. For those of you that played Halo, you'll recognize that Cortana was the artificial intelligence that was in the Master Chief's helmet. And so it's kind of cool. The the voice that they have here is uh, is uh, that same voice. And they've got some pre-recorded snips of hers and then some computer-generated stuff. But it's pretty cool. There's a bunch of great questions out there. They've got a bunch of uh canned answers but i'll run through some of them in case uh, in case you haven't seen it so again you can fire cortana up either by hitting the live tile or the search button because she takes over search and cortana is pretty smart um so it's got this thing there it's got the little halo and it says you know what's on your mind it gives you some suggestions of things to ask her because i never know what to i can never talk to women i've never been able to talk to women this one at least uh, gives you some ideas what to say or at the bottom you can hit uh you can just type stuff in or you can hit the microphone and sorry didn't catch that i'll be back to you in a second hush um but the great thing about cortana is that she will reply however you ask so if you type a message in she will give you a text message back if you speak a question to her she will speak the answer back and i really knew that cortana and i were uh were meant to be together when one of the examples of the try was try show me funny cat videos that uh, that was just great so so some of the favorite ones and I take no credit for any of these I have not uh, I, I did not come up with any of these on my own but here's some fun ones so again I'm at the Cortana screen am I handsome absolutely there we go there we go and you can see she even puts the uh, the answer up there at the top in case uh, in case I want to read it but there's uh, there's some all great things here um, so Trevor in the chat room likes this one what is the temperature in degrees Kelvin oh she didn't give me a spoken answer back what a bum uh, but there's um, but there's all kinds of great stuff. And so you can all also do things, do reminders. Uh, one of the examples here, it says, wake me up at 7. So I did a thing where I said, you know, tomorrow morning at 8, remind me to call my mom. And it just does that kind of stuff. It goes through your contacts. It figures out who your mom is. Now, one of the ways that it does all this is this idea of notebooks. And when you look in the upper right-hand corner of Cortana, you can see the, the, the shortcut to the notebooks. 
And these are the places where Cortana gets information. And you can see um, some of these interests and quiet hours and uh, people and places and all that kind of stuff. And you can control how much Cortana knows about you. And so that's... Uh, that's that's good stuff. So you've got all kinds of settings where it can be used. It can, you know, all, all, all kinds of stuff. So Trevor saying, ask, what is the degree in Kelvin? Okay. What is the temperature in Kelvin? It's currently 274 and clear. There we go. So it's 274 degrees Kelvin right now in Ames, Iowa. But the other great thing that it did... I've never tried this before, Trevor. This is awesome. It gave me this week's forecast in Kelvin. <laughs> so that's awesome. That's good stuff. Um, so, yeah, who is Kelvin? Who is Kelvin and what has he done with my weather? Uh, so that's great stuff. So I can see it's going to get up to uh, 284 on a Friday, 288 on Wednesday. Better uh, better remember to turn the AC on for that. That's uh, So if you want your weather forecast in Kelvin, there you go. Um but like I was saying, you got those notebooks up there, so you can uh, you can see what uh, what Cortana has uh, access to. Now I've only had Cortana here for eight hours, something like that. I haven't got a chance to play with it a lot. I'll be honest, I'm not a guy that talks on his phone much or to his phone much, so I'm gonna gonna have to try to uh, <laughs> gonna try to figure out what the usage for this is because I know the people that have Siri rave about it, the people that have Google Now rave about it. Um, so I'm gonna see what I can do. Uh, Teresa in the chat room mentioned that that, uh, that forecast getting up to 288 is actually the temperature in Fahrenheit in Houston for TechEd next month. So that's probably true. Uh, but good stuff, Cortana. And, you, you know, Cortana is one of those that, uh, that has gotten a lot of press, so there's a bunch of demos out there about it. Now, one of the bad things about Cortana is right now it's technically in beta, and it's only available in the United States. Now, right now, without even trying, in my chat room, I got uh, one, two, two people for sure, that are three people that I know that are in Canada. Uh, I got one guy from Australia. So there's just a bunch of, uh, and, you know, Lori's in Alabama. Who knows what, the even, what, what they're doing with those guys. Um, but it's only available in the U.S. So fortunately... There's a pretty easy way around that, and John Liu in the chat room was kind enough to try this before I went online, even before I went online the first time. That's how dedicated he was. And he's in Australia, and there are some things that you can do. You can tweak your regional settings and download the language pack. I think it was awesome that he's in Australia, and it, and it basically said, I can't understand you. Uh, we need to download a language pack. <laughs> So, um, so that's just proof that they talk funny down uh, down in Australia. So if you are not in the U.S. but you've got the Windows Phone 8.1 uh, update, you can trick Cortana into uh, to lighting up for you. So, and again, John tried that; it works. It's on a bunch of the sites I trusted, but uh, but it's out there. So I talked, uh, you know, 20 minutes ago. I said I was going to tell you how you can get this for yourself. Anybody uh, anybody can get Windows Phone 8.1 if you've got Windows Phone. Now, again, the great deal is Windows Phone 8.1 will run on any phone that runs Windows Phone 8. So this right here, this little beauty here, is a Windows or a, a Lumia 920. Runs like a champ on here. I have not done it yet, but my backup phone is uh, this little guy here. It's a Lumia 520 with a dead battery. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, uh, the the women from Alabama are mad at me now, and so Kathy said she's going to call ahead to uh, to uh, SP Tech kind of make sure that I get signed up for all the veggie meals. So the good news about that is I'm going to lose a lot of weight. That's going to be great. But even this little little darling here, this uh, this Windows uh, this Lumia 520, it can run Windows Phone 8.1. So everybody gets the update. So if you've got a Windows Phone and you want to, to download Windows 8.1 right away before it comes out, you have to uh, you have to make a proclamation. Then it hurt my heart, and in the chat room they're having a lot of good t uh, good fun with this. And honestly, I hate to lie, my 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 parents raised me better than that. But uh, what you need to do is you need to sign up as a Windows Phone developer. Uh, and so I signed up as one of those things a while back before the last update came out. And once you sign up as a developer, 
then you can install an app from the App Store that's called Preview for Developers. And if you've got that installed, <laughs> then once Microsoft flips the big switch in Redmond, chunk, which they uh, flipped this morning around midnight or whenever, then when you do a, a Windows update, it will find those bits out there. So that's what I did. And you can sign up for that. It's free to sign up for. It'll take you like three minutes to sign up as a developer. And then after you get that uh, app from the App Store installed, go to your settings on your rickety old Windows 8 phone. Pfft. Go to settings, Windows phone, check for updates. You're going to get one update, and uh, it's going to do it, going to reboot, and then grab the, uh, grab the OS. So that's, uh, that's great fun. Now, before we went live, we had some discussion in the chat room about why all the song and dance. Clearly, Windows Phone 8.1 is out. It's been out for a while. It's done. It's baked. Why this whole rigmarole of doing the thing and, uh, and loading the thing and signing the thing, why not just push it out? <laughs> uh, a couple of reasons for that. First off is the thing that you get in your preview for developers is just the operating system. So imagine that being just Windows, just whatever. And so it's it's the apps, it's Cortana, it's all that. But what it is not, it is not device-specific firmware. So I'm running Windows Phone 8.1 on here, and it will mostly be unchanged when it comes out for everybody. But what has not happened is uh, AT&T has changed has not pushed out the firmware updates for my Lumia 920. So, for instance, if I had a 1520, I couldn't take advantage of the Miracast stuff uh, until the firmware comes out from the provider. So that's one thing. You're only getting the OS. You're not getting the device-specific and carrier-specific uh, bits, the firmware. Um, so that's part of it. The second reason is this is coming from Microsoft. It is not coming from your carrier. So... That was one of the things with Android devices It was always a problem is you could buy an Android device and you could have an Android device that was more than capable of running the next version of whatever the Android OS was. But if the carrier didn't want to go through all the trouble of testing it and, you know, updating their apps and all that, they would just never push it out to you. And there was really nothing you could do. Now, you could hack your phone, you could root it and do all that kind of stuff. But, man, that was a pain. So Microsoft saw all that and they decided they weren't going to make people do that. So they kind of came up with this loophole. If you wanted to develop on their stuff, you could sign up as a developer. They would give you the OS, and then whenever the carriers do it, uh, they uh, they'll let you you know they'll push that stuff out. So Microsoft says okay, it's the carriers that we're kind of waiting on. So in my case, AT and T, uh, Joanne's case, it's Rogers or whatever up in in Canada. But that's why the carriers are educating their folks on it, training them how to support it, updating all the bloatware that we all wish we could just uninstall. Updating drivers, that kind of stuff, but we're just uh, we're just getting the OS. So that is all that I have on Windows Phone 8.1. Um, I've got a couple other SharePointy things to talk about and PowerShell things, uh, but expect probably maybe not next week because I'll be at SPTechCon, but maybe in two weeks we will uh, we will talk more about Windows Phone 8.1 now that I've had a chance to play with it and all that kind of stuff. All right, so a couple of weeks ago, and I wanted to talk about it last week, but uh, ran out of time, I published a blog post on how to upload files to SharePoint with PowerShell. And this is uh, one of many, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys have the same thing. I have a OneNote file, all hail OneNote, a OneNote file that has a bunch of blog posts that I've just never written. They are in the hopper, as I like to like to refer to them. And this is one that's been in the hopper for a while. Excuse me. And basically, nothing new here. I didn't uh, I didn't discover the tenth planet or the ninth planet, depending on whether you recognize Pluto or not as a planet. Um, but this is, and again, there's a bunch of story part in the blog post, but, but essentially there are two situations where 
you want to upload files to SharePoint, one if you're on the SharePoint server and one if you're on another machine, like my Windows 8 desktop, all that. And so this is both of those ways. So no matter how it is that you need to get a file into SharePoint and you've got the, the massive hammer that is PowerShell, this blog post should have all that you need. And it's pretty simple, and it's all uh, it's all stuff I'm actually doing. So it's you know it's the, the scripts work. Now the second script scenario two from a remote machine, I pieced together two different scripts that I'd used and screwed up some variable names, but I got that fixed, so that's all good. Uh, but just great way, easy way to upload uh, files to SharePoint from PowerShell. The next one is one. This one weighed heavy on my heart for a while, and. Uh, I was glad to get this out. I can sleep now at night and uh, w without a guilty conscience. For you know, f four years now, five years now, um, I've been posting PowerShell scripts and PowerShell snippets and things like that on my blog for you fine folks to to look at and mock accordingly and and uh, create better ones and all that. And. One thing I've always done that I've always felt bad about is I've always left the passwords in plain text in the scripts. Part of that was at the beginning because I didn't know any better, and then uh, you know after that it was just because it was easier, just because I was lazy. But it's a horrible idea, just a, an atrocious idea to leave passwords in plain text in text files. And even PowerShell knows it's a bad idea and it makes you jump through all kinds of hoops to actually do this terrible nasty thing that I've been doing to you folks for four or five years now. So I finally got around to writing a blog post on how to take those credentials and save them to disk in an encrypted fashion so that anybody can't just walk over to your server, log in and say, hey look there's this farm password because he's got a script that runs that does whatever. Um, and so, so that was a good one, and I will probably start using that as I publish more scripts to my blog. I'm doing a PowerShell session at SP TechCon next week. This script will definitely come up, and we'll walk through that. But the idea is that anything that you're running, like let's say you have a script that's going to be uploading files to SharePoint. If you're using the object model, you need to authenticate, or I guess even if you're doing it remotely, you need to authenticate. And this is going to be a way for you to script that, leave it on the file system without, uh, without everything being in plain text. So... A lot of the, the traffic to my blog is still on SharePoint 2010, so um, I there are two different ways to do it. SharePoint 2010 requires PowerShell v2. SharePoint 2013 requires PowerShell v3. So I, I publish both ways to do it. Now both ways will work, um, and but I, I publish them both so it. Uh, so that it will work. So a couple things in the chat room, you guys are uh, are asking some good questions. One of the gotchas of this particular method is that whoever saves the encrypted file has to be the one to decrypt the encrypted file. So what can't happen is I can't log in as Todd and save the credentials for a process and then go into task manager or not task manager uh, task scheduler and schedule something that runs as sp farm to upload the files if i create the encrypted package as todd i have to decrypt it as todd so if you're doing anything that's you know running scheduled stuff make sure that you log you log in as that service or run powershell as a service account something create the encrypted package from that now Jack asked a good machine a good question if the machine matters as well honestly I didn't test that I tested the username part it didn't work I did not test the machine so what Jack's asking is if I log in on Todd log in as Todd on server 1 encrypt everything and then copy the script and the encrypted file to server 2 will it work honestly Jack I don't know but I'm going to give you some homework buddy try that get back to me let me know how it works um, but this is uh, this is some good stuff, and I highly recommend after you look through it, uh, you know, get a, get a handle on it and start working that into your process. Because I'd hate to see anybody get uh, get hacked or get their stuff, uh, you know, compromised. One thing I definitely wanted to do though is this is something that's been going on for a while, and I just haven't talked about it. But now is as good a time as any uh, to talk about it. Starting, I don't know, a year ago, something like that, I started having somebody tech edit all of my blog posts. <clears throat> 
for grammar, for technical stuff, whatever. I think uh, I think Lori Gowan's been doing it the whole time. And so I had her go over this blog post, and she fixed some grammar errors. She fixed some errors where I forgot words, things like that. So every time you read a blog post and the English is mostly passable and the flow is somewhat followable and all that, it's probably because Lori uh, brought things to my attention. So uh, in the last paragraph of this blog post, I give her uh, I give her a shout out. But also I ran this one since it was kind of a weird fringe powershell thing and I wasn't sure if she'd done it before. I also ran it past Mike Robbins. Mike Robbins is a PowerShell guy, a friend of mine from uh, from a few years ago, won the scripting games like last year, I think. So, you know, he can hold his own with PowerShell. And I sent it to him to make sure that all the PowerShell, the deep bowels and stuff, to make sure that I wasn't doing anything dumb on the PowerShell side. And Mike uh, came back and said, nope, looks great. Everything you said works, but you're not showing the PowerShell V3 way to do it. And here's the PowerShell V3. So before Mike took a look at it, it was only the SharePoint 2010 version. He added uh, the SharePoint 2013 version. So shout out to Mike, uh, uh, Mike on that. So to show your appreciation, go out. Uh, you can follow both Lori and Mike on Twitter. Lori is uh, slash Lori or at Lori Gowan on Twitter, and her blog is uh, pointgowan.com slash see the point. And then Mike Robbins, his blog is mikefrobbins.com, and his Twitter is at mikefrobbins. So thanks to them for all that help and. Uh, and uh, we'll, uh, you know, continue to do that kind of stuff. I've got some other folks that I mean to thank, so maybe I'll do a, a gratitude uh, session at some point and uh, call the other folks. Because, like, when I uh, do sequel stuff, I talk to Tom LaRock, things like that. Okay, so here's another uh, PowerShell one. And this one just just came in under the wire here. I wasn't going to do this one, but it uh, did. So one of the things on my main workstation here, I have this one set to not um, apply Windows updates automatically. I've got it set to download them and then tell me because every time I let it um, install these patches automatically, it reboots my darn machine and I end up losing stuff. And uh, So I don't let it do that anymore. But then <laughs> on Windows 8.1 now, that means every morning or sometimes every morning and some afternoons, I have to install the Windows Defender patches as well because they show up the same way. So what I was going to talk about in tonight's netcast was how I found a cool way to get into the Windows Update app and run the Windows Updates without having to go start, Windows Update, blah, install patches, wait, 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 okay. So I was all proud of myself because I was like, oh, yeah, you just start run WU app and it brings it up. I'm the smartest man alive. And then late this afternoon, I saw a even better way to do it. And that's with PowerShell. So there is a PowerShell commandlet that just updates Windows Defender. So now, I mean, I've always got a PowerShell window open, right? I know you do, and everybody's got a PowerShell window open. So you can just type update-mp-signature, and it will update Windows Defender. So now I don't even have to worry about opening up the Windows Update app if it's just Defender uh, Defender patches that are Defender definitions that I need to download. So once again, PowerShell comes to the rescue. I'll say it again. There's nothing that PowerShell can't do. Um, so that's a, that's a good one. And finally, uh, and this one came up. I think Mark mentioned this in the chat room before we went on air. And D Don Jones at uh, Concentrated Tech last week tweeted out, some free PowerShell ebooks at PowerShell.org. You can download those. They're not huge. They're kind of like pamphlets, but Don is one of the, the greats in PowerShell. There's some really good stuff in there. He's basically just got a OneDrive drive shared out that's got these ebooks in it. But there's you know all kinds of stuff, troubleshooting and, and those kind of things. So uh, go out there. It's at PowerShell.org. There'll be a link in the show notes and all that. And just grab those. Just, just some good light uh, PowerShell reading. That was a lot of stuff. But don't worry, folks. I'm not too pooped. Do a little self-promotion. Always a little energy from, uh, little, always some energy for self-promotion. Kind of like how there's always stomach space for ice cream. There's always energy for self-promotion. So next week, we're not, like I mentioned um, in the first take of this, not going to be here next week. 
Going to be there next week. You can't tell. California's that way. Going to be at SP TechCon. Landing Monday afternoon. Going to be doing the netcast live from SP TechCon. If you are in San Francisco or at SP TechCon, come on down. I don't know like which room or any of that kind of stuff yet. There, this is going to be at. But I will be doing this netcast live at SP TechCon. So swing down and see that. And then Shane and I are going to be doing a couple of sessions. We'll be doing one on upgrade. That's going to be one of those half-day, three-hour jobbies where we're just trying to do every upgrade thing that anybody can think about. And then we're doing an admin session, I think a PowerShell session, and just kind of hanging around, pestering folks, being a bother. That's kind of uh, kind of what we're going to be doing. So if you're at SP TechCon, swing by the Rackspace booth. If you're a listener of the show or a viewer of the show and we've never talked before, I'm begging you, come up, introduce yourself, shake my hand, say hey. I would love to talk to you. Uh, love to talk to anybody, and even if we have met before, if you can stand to do it again, come up and chat with me some more. I'm a pretty uh, pretty friendly guy, pretty social guy, so uh, so come on up and say hey. So that is next week, all next week, SP TechCon in San Francisco. And then a month from today, a month from today, oh my God, a month from today, is Microsoft's TechEd North America in beautiful, sunny Houston, Texas, where it really is uh, 288 degrees. That is May 12th through the 15th, and right now, and I think all it's going to um, end up doing is doing is a pre-con session uh, on you know admin install that kind of stuff. But then generally just being a nuisance all over tech ed, trying to get into uh, get into stuff. So that's going to be May 12th through the 15th. Rackspace does not have a booth there, but if you see me around again, introduce yourself, say hey, I'll be uh, I'll be doing I'll be hanging out at the SharePoint booth and all that uh, all that kind of stuff. And then in three months, oh my God, three months from today, I'll be in Sydney, Australia, hanging out with my main man, uh, John Liu there, at the Sharing the Point conference in Australia. And I'll be doing my my much loved, much beloved, much lauded Visual Studio, using Visual Studio for a load testing session. Nothing but good times come from that. You'll laugh, you'll cry. Ugh, gonna be good times. Gonna be doing that session and then a PowerShell session, but only with PowerShell with SharePoint Online. So that's a new one for me. Haven't done that one before, but I'll be doing that one in Australia, and that is July 15th through the 16th, uh, two days in uh, the Hilton downtown Sydney, Australia there. And then the next week, July 22nd and the 23rd, I'm gonna be over in Auckland, New Zealand, doing the same shtick. So uh, if you're if you're in Australia, if you're in Sydney, uh, come find me. If you're in New Zealand, uh, again, same thing. Look me up. We can hang out. It'll be a good time. So that is all. Clocking in at just under uh, 48 minutes here. That is awesome. Thanks, everybody, for the chat room. Thanks for listening to the first 10 minutes twice. I appreciate that. Um, but, again, next week I'll be at SP TechCon. But uh, we'll be rocking. We'll be doing the, the netcast uh, out there. So I'll see you guys there. So thanks, everybody. Enjoy your Windows Phone updates, and I'll see you next week.